vision. So that was Universal Studios Florida, which is inside Universal Orlando Resort, which makes sense because Florida is inside Orlando. So just what did they add to turn this half-day park slash half-usable studio into a full resort? Well, there's City Walk, aka the thing you have to walk through to get to the thing you want to do. Although it has some fun stuff, like overpriced food, mini golf, a hard rock cafe, and concert venue, which is significant because of this, and various nightclubs that I don't really care about at all. Although the karaoke bar has a live band, which is neat. My friends made me do it. And of course they built some hotels, but it's not really a resort until you build a second park. And that park was called Islands of Adventure. And as its name would suggest, Islands of Adventure consists of a small body of water surrounded on all sides by a large landmass. Island! Earlier I compared the Universal Resort expansion to the Disneyland Resort expansion. Even though Islands of Adventure opened two years before California Adventure, Disney's still the yardstick by which we measure everything in the theme park industry. But one other thing they have in common? Islands of Adventure's original attendance was disappointing at best. But while California Adventure was a victim of its own mediocrity, Islands of Adventure was a victim of bad marketing. Some people didn't realize they built a whole second park instead of just a new land or a couple of new attractions. Ironically, years later when they were advertising the addition of the Little Wizard, they had to reassure guests that it wasn't an entirely new park, that admission to Hogwarts would be included with their Islands of Adventure ticket. But we are once again getting ahead of ourselves. The layout of the park is basically a world showcase for fictional worlds, except with a far more manageable walking distance. Despite Universal's own vast library of classic properties, every island of adventure is based on source material that wasn't originally created by the company. Except Lost Continent, which doesn't seem to be based on anything. Of course, Universal had already done movie adaptations of some of this source material, and they would go on to do more. Some were more successful than others. But by and large, this is kind of the great movie ride of parks, a good theme park development team having a lot of fun with other people's toys. But, like I said, it's not like Universal's a noticeably cohesive brand, so some other companies getting involved in the mix is no problem. I'm just surprised they didn't include a classic Monsters Island. You enter the park through Port of Entry, which is basically Main Street, U.S. vaguely exotic country. There's the token gift shops behind some creative facades that aren't trying to look like anywhere specific, but evoke the feeling of resting at an oasis before you gear up for your big adventure. Let's start our adventure next time with Marvel Superhero Island. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. I want it more than I can tell. And for once it might be grand to have someone understand I want so much more than they've got planned